Hello, and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer, and I decided to sit on the couch again because people seem to think that was fun. <laughs> it is fun, and I noticed new pillows. Yeah, well, because of the Thanksgiving holiday, I need a bigger pillow to hide behind, so I feel safe. So um, It's very ornate and decorative. And well, the... obviously, it's Hermes, Dave. Oh, so ever good. since the Ikea thing, I'm going to pull out top shelf. I have <laughs> all new sweaters, by the way. I have, like... I did Black Friday shopping. I have like eight new sweaters that I'll be wearing throughout the season. Um, oh, for you? Yeah. I had a sw- Do you want to explain your Mandy Wurzel moment? <sighs> People, I was, I was shaving in the shower. I do that. Thinking about skating. Yeah. Thinking about what I'm going to say about Rika Kihira. <laughs> and I, I tend to like, I have a pointy chin. And sometimes when I'm shaving and not looking, I'll go like that and I'll nick it. And it's, we all you'll have John Nick, You'll John Nick's it. It's understandable, <laughs> Dave. Oh, Dave, we're off to a great start. Okay. So if it gets at any point, it starts gushing blood, Jonathan will just tell me and I'll be like, oh. Hmm. Right, yeah. Okay. The show must go on as Ashley Wagner Just keep us. thinking. Just keep thinking and hold it there. Yeah. <laughs> you cut off my joke. I was going to be like, as Ashley Wagner taught us for three seasons. It's oh, amazing. Oh, well, see, that's funnier. Yeah. Moment <laughs> over. <laughs> okay. You missed it, Jonathan. Thanks a lot. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> it was that kind of a week. Jonathan, I have to tell you, this Yummy. Grand Prix has been one of my favorites ever. Yes. We are thankful. I am for thankful. An interesting for Grand Prix. A very yeah. interesting Grand Prix. I think we need to start with the ladies because obviously. And that's why half the viewers are here. Uh, <laughs> let's be honest. I know. Sometimes it's the one I watch last, but okay. <laughs> so let's start with the woman of the hour. Because we were just saying her name, so we can get it out of the way. Evgenia Medvedeva from Russia. She, I did a plus four. It was a plus It yeah, was plus, plus five. Four. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because once you know you're going to pronounce it consistently, it'll be a plus five. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> Jonathan, do you think she should go to Russia Nationals? Russia Nationals, they're usually around our Christmas, correct? Right. They're they're our Christmas gift. Yes, exactly. And they do keep on giving. So my question is, you know, a lot of times it's helpful when you don't make the Grand Prix final Mm -hmm. because it's going to give you that time to work. But of course, it becomes different. It's my understanding, and you have to help me understand the difference between speculation and fact Mm -hmm. on this one, about the rule requirements for her to attend Russian nationals. Well, skaters can... Look, in my... I don't think that there's a hard and fast rule, and this is speculation, but if you've watched it over the last couple seasons, sometimes people will decline Russian nationals if they just won the Grand Prix final or if they are, and they may have be sick or, you know, a lot of times these skaters have been going and going and going since September, right? Or since, so they've been, they've done their test event. They may have done one to two senior Bs. They've done one to two Grand Prix. They've done Grand Prix final. Frankly, they're, they need a break, right? When you're, yeah. um, so it's not uncommon for someone. Now, if that person is Alexei Yagudin and you've been training in the U.S. while Plushenko has been in Russia around all of the Russian judges and Mishin has been pulling his political factor and you're Yagudin who's not always going to nail it, it's going to be harder for you to win Russian nationals, right? So if, if Evgenia Medvedeva wanted to win Russian nationals, she would have had to come in looking fantastic and outskate um, Zagitova by a good bit if she wanted to do this. And frankly, from the programs alone, I don't think that she could do this because there are huge issues with both of them. So and- so, so riddle me this. <clears throat> we have we have her in progress. When, and you know and by the way, I just want to pause for one second. This, I'm not picking on Russian nationals here. This goes for US nationals. It yeah, goes for Canadian nationals and it goes for, um, and we're going to ask these questions throughout the show. And it also goes for Japanese nationals. I'm going to ask who is in line to, who is even in contention to make the Japanese world team. I was just talking to a skater from the U S who was saying, I think we might, I might be fourth at nationals. Maybe I could get third, but I think that they're not like maybe, you know, the percentage chance and how this goes. The judges form a, an opinion on you based on how you performed at the Grand Prix, through Grand Prix Final Session. I don't I don't think that that's necessarily outrageously inappropriate. 
I think it's if reality. you are the federation, it is your job mm -hmm. to present the best world team, the best mm -hmm. European, you know, championship yes. team you can. And, you know, we go back and forth about this, Ross Minor, mm -hmm. um, you know, a, a other examples. That's just the most recent one about it just that it can't just be in those kinds of competition. Who is winning the day? Yeah, because this is where it's as if the Federation is taking a vote. And well, they literally are. And if you're in the Russian Federation right now, you know that even though she's struggling, which I believe she would have regardless. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is just a coaching situation. This no. is why people got some flack when did Atiri say, tell her to retire? Did she not tell her to retire? I think many people knew that this season, regardless of her coaching situation, was going to be a struggle. Yes. And but even amidst that struggle. And, and by the way, we didn't make that up. That really <laughs> angers me. Um, yeah, of course not. Yeah, that was <laughs> we got that. From the source. From a source very close to her, who was actually saying this in public at a camp. So right. we can just leave it at that. Like this, yeah. and like several and, people were th present, and like this was discussed openly. So and if, anyway. And if you are a Teary, and you were really coming at it, she, she kind of knew the writing was on the wall, and this next season was going to be a tough one. So the I way think... we know, and people think that like, okay, so last season... If Genia was having problems, if Genia Medvedev yeah. was having problems with her jumps, she was actually, you could start to see it. And Alyssa Sisney pointed out to me her skating skills, the the flopping over and how scratchy they were getting in 2017 during the 9-11 program. As, they, as she was getting taller, she was like, look at how much she's struggling to get the edge. Brady the Tanel, center also. Yeah. The center, when you ever see like her go like this in her footwork, um, Brady Tanel does it. And... And that's when you're not using your, your knee and bend enough to really be using your skating skills. And you're trying to use your entire body to torque some of these edges around. Um, we can see it with Zagitova now more than we did before. So when people think we're picking on someone, it's not true. We think you can see things that are developing over time. So, and it's, it happens, you know, like, especially with, um, with the skating skills that happens with basic technique that's just not being developed at a higher level because they're so focused on the points on the jumps on this and like this needs detail work that happens year after year after year that like Tarasova uh thing one of the things of Buyanova if you notice when we talk about Sutskova with her skating skills she may not be landing any of her jumps she has like right like Russian ice dancer edges going on in her footwork sequence I just want and like they are. Another reason she reminds me of our Paulina, because <laughs> Paulina was so quick to point out she took all her dance tests, and, yes. and there was the same, there's a thing, if you look, you can find some real quality in places, mm -hmm. it's just where they get mixed up along the way. And and the thing about Yevgenia is yeah. the, the mood of this competition, you know, they're in work mode right mm -hmm. now, and I think it's important to remember that people like Ryan and Tracy or whoever takes on a new high profile student at this level at this late in the game. It's not about this year's Grand Prix. They have to be thinking big picture because uh, to do otherwise defeats the whole process. If she just wanted to muster out a couple more medals this season and call it quits, she might as well have stayed. You know what I mean? And just eked out something. The judges are still right there with her. She was getting astronomical PCS scores. Um, for performances that weren't going well. Mm -hmm. So it's clear, if you're the Russian Federation, she's still a better choice than Sofia or Maria. Or for Worlds or for? Euros even, I think. I don't know. I don't know. I just think there are chances that the judges, even when it's going wrong, are still there to help. I think if, if she can take enough time between now and Europeans and just kind of do what they need to do. I just felt like the energy from Brian and Tracy and Yevgenia in the kiss and cry was odd. And I don't think it was the kind of odd of like, whoops, that was a tough skate. Let's mm -hmm. just comfort each other right now. And I'm making all of this up. This is just a sheer speculation uh, on, on my part is I felt like somehow after Skate Canada, it meant that this competition could have gone either way. Mm -hmm. If you had told me she was gonna win by a landslide, I would have believed you. And if you told me she ended up in sixth, seventh, whatever, I would have believed you also. So I wonder if they came to this competition with an ultimatum. 
or that this competition had to mean something about their progress. And then when it didn't pan out, they were kind of disappointed in a bigger picture kind of way. I don't know, mm -hmm. maybe she thought, if this one doesn't work, I'm gonna have to find another solution. Maybe they said, if this doesn't work, we have to throw out the programs. I don't know, but it just felt like this had so much more impact than the competition itself. So, I don't think you're wrong. Um, there's a lot to digest, pick apart. Um, so, a couple points. I know that there are a lot of cooks in the kitchen in this situation. Um, yeah. Evgenia is very, uh, involved in her own training and has a lot of ideas and is very um like you know how tara was very involved and michelle were both very organizing they weren't like just letting someone you know tell them dictate what, to know. them yeah, yeah. right so she's very involved and she's very invested uh her mom also involved in this brian's involved tracy's involved david wilson's involved. i know that sandra took a step back so they haven't worked with sandra in a couple of months on the short and i think that you can tell Honestly, like I, th but I think the probably for them. But do you think it's the program? I mean, I agree that the programs are very flawed for her. But I think if she was still landing what she needed to, the programs would be okay enough. They'd be okay enough. But if she even enjoyed the program, would she be skating better? I don't know. The thing is, is know. that like, it's this whole thing where you have to follow through. So you get the new program, you get the new look, you get the whole thing, and then you stop. You like it's what Alexa and Chris like. You did like ten percent of it. And then follow you follow through, AKA take your medication, finish your antibiotics, yeah. which hopefully you won't need on that. So, <laughs> okay. So, and like, I don't think that that's obviously they had a lot to work on and there's a lot to work on, but you have to work at it all at the same time. Like, and there's a huge disconnect. I'm getting text messages from a lot of people, smart, intelligent people that are saying, should she leave Ryan? But then it's like, where is there to go in Russia? She's not going to go back to, I mean, maybe a Terry well, would take. Right. But this is my thing, Dave. Do I, you got to take your medication. You got to finish it. You, you have to. And this, the, these troubles, these mm -hmm. hardships were going to happen even if she stayed and Atiri knew it. And that's why she made the comment, maybe it's time mm -hmm. because she knew the next level was going to be really tough, whether she was with Brian, whether and it happened with, with Shelapan, it happened with Yulia, it's happened with uh, Evgenia and Zagitova is next. But by the time that happens... Trusova, Sherpakova, and Kostunaya will be there and it'll be distracting everyone and they'll be doing quad lutzes and everyone will be saying how great Ateri is, right? right? So this is what happens. And then it happened to Yulia, it happened, and you can, like, so this is the biggest thing. And is it even Ateri's fault? Not really. She's, you're going to her to win. You're not going to her to get this, like, long career where you're going to, like, be around for a million years. They're kind of giving you the tools to, like, win now make your money, go skate in shows and like have a nice life. Right. Like, and it's I don't mean that like in a, a mean way. It's like, yeah, a in a, it's a bit in, in, um, opera, we have managers or we have agents yeah. and like an agent is just going to get you gigs, mm -hmm. just going to just throw you out there, get some cash. And a manager is going to take you from step one to, to the end and create an arc and create big picture goals and all this sort of stuff versus just this rapid fire one and done. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a bit this a teary thing. Let's get you that medal. Let's get you this medal. And then next year, oh, it's, you're having a tough time. OK, you're over here. Now we're going to get this one a medal. Yeah. And, medal. and I think that that's very true because there are some people that are saying and I get messages from people asking um, about. A Terry and the fact of a truce of a doing the quad lots like is she gonna get injured and it's like well what's the goal is the goal for her to be world champion is it to be Olympic champion like I don't know if it's just to win worlds she may make it to worlds in 2020 get the points that she needs and then we never see her again and that could be a success in her life like right like she could have all the show contracts she wants like she could be have enough going for her right. you know um so it's just not the kind of thing that we think of. But at the same time, when we start talking about Evgenia, the programs are a problem for me. And this is what I'm so, like, but she doesn't believe in them. But I, I, th I heard, you know, we don't know, but I think training has been going okay. Like, they're very focused on the jumps. The practices Evgenia, there were doing better. The practices Ev were not the same things yes. that we saw in performance, which is important to note, I think. So I know that Brian was even making comments, and you could kind of read between the lines in his interview last week with the Russian press that Evgenia has been very focused on the jumps. Obviously, her timing is, you know, off. She looks like she is... She looks taller every time we see her. She... Ha Look, she's an entirely different 
skater person than she was a year ago, two years ago. Um, we look at her and it's very hard. Um, it's hard to jump with your legs more than when you jump with your arms. And when you, ha- when you become a woman, you cannot rely on your arms as much because it's not going to generate the rotation that you need. If it, if it was an easy change to have made, she would have done it a long time ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think anyone even in that camp that we see the arms, I don't think they come at it with saying, use your arms. They just know, okay, she's using her arms a little, but whatever. I don't think- They're just focused on get the rotation around, get the points. You know, they're not even thinking of. And this I will say about some of the press and Simon from Eurosport, I'll tell you, he's becoming more and more nails on chalkboard for me because- It's his time. It's, yeah, especially with, because they have Chris and Mark who are so good. I don't care for the woman either, but, um. They're ta- there's revisionist history mm-hmm. about what last year really looked like. Let's not pretend last year was the same year as it was two years ago. Last year two was years. a struggle. and then Last she was year her. was a struggle. And even though she got those placements on paper that were close, she, the, she was already in hot water and she eked out the, the best she could for that season and got results that were very impressive for the, the, the mm-hmm. position she was in. Also, the rotation was a problem. The mm. there's so much like I want to say, but I don't know what we can say without getting ourselves in trouble. Uh, uh, I think I think we've said enough. The I, foot I, I was think... look. The foot was blamed um, at the at the beginning of the season. I remember being shocked when we saw her again later in the season, and you were like, "Oh my goodness!" Like you are like they really have been. They really tried to delay things with her as long as possible, and like. You know, this whole change that's inevitable coming. Um, I think I, when you look at the programs, you look at she's disconnected. She's not selling the short program. The fact that she's got a dark blue dress and this dress that's not flattering when she's doing um, orange colored sky and it's supposed to be bright from the costume to the emphasis to the facial expressions. She's so nervous about the jumps. And that's the one thing is that she blamed this on her own mental approach. That's going to happen. You're whether she was losing the timing of her jumps over in Russia or she's working on fixing them here and she's in between techniques, this season is going to be a wash. And that's why I don't see the benefit of her going. And obviously no one's going to stop this. She's going to go to Russian nationals She's and they're going to try to push this out as long as possible. But you're not going to get the fixes that you want. This is a girl who needs to learn to work on her skating skills, work on those spins that she's not getting any of the positions. She's not going to sit low enough and she's not getting the camera. And that's okay. But it does take time and it takes time. If you are constantly hustling to Mm. get prematurely ready for a thing, Mm. I I mean, in a very different way, yet quasi overall similar way, it's that idea of Gracie. Mm. Uh, Not the same at all, obviously, but the idea of rushing something is not going to help you here. Mm-hmm. Uh, she has plenty of competition experience. <laughs> she yeah. doesn't need, she, I think she needs more time living it and doing it and doing it at a high level in practice. And Honestly, if we saw her just skate and practice every day for six months, do a couple shows over the summer and come out next fall looking really strong, that would be so much more beneficial to me than going out and like, getting in your head and your reputation of everyone each time that you're no longer who you were because it's so yeah, it's negative creating a narrative. and it's, it's a negative narrative. It's like, Oh my God, look at her. Oh my God. She should have stayed with the Terry. Oh my God. Look at her body. Oh my God. Look at how she, her programs are terrible. But it compares today to two years ago. Yeah. It's not fairly comparing today to one year ago. And, and that's, that's where I have the problem when, people talk about the path she is or is not on. So there are a couple moments in her free skate where I'm like, oh, I can see what they were doing and they're trying to teach her to skate and like her to create the moments and the music rather than just the music carry her. And like Yuna, sometimes when she did Les Mis, the music really carries her, right? But then she creates the moments in the tango in the next year and they're trying to teach Evgeny to do that. But the fact that they're not focused on the programs because they're still focused on the jumps, it all creates this like mountain of Right, like it just. Well, what cre- are we left with? Yeah, you have exactly. like messy jumps. You've got this program that looks half-hearted. You've got music that sounds like noise for seventy percent of it. Like you, it's just like not. But you and I, you and I look at the program because I, I am in agreement with you. I look at the program and I was like, David Wilson and Evgenia should have come up with something a little more inspired to me than this. 
Um, but you look at the PCS marks, and it doesn't matter. Yeah. She's still winning on 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 uh, choreography and presentation and interpretation and all of these sorts of things. And I'm not saying, therefore, it's a good program because I don't believe it is. I just think for her soul, it mm. seems like it's the cleanliness and the technical capability that provide her with confidence. And then mm. the confidence translates into the choreography. It's not unlike what Raphael said when we were talking to him. I think it's when I interviewed him in LA. I forget which time he said this. Raf with his, all of his things, but he's like, when you have better fitness, you get better technique, you know? And you're like, that is not untrue. Like, there's just, like, technique in terms of, like, what you want, right? Like, with, like, putting your arm here and this here and that. But in terms of getting the rotation and getting things, like, look at the difference in Mara and Honda from last time to this time. It's a better skater. She's getting her snap. Yeah. She was better trained. She's sharper. Sharper. Yeah. Her body's probably sharper than it was a couple months ago. She's probably stronger, better strength to weight ratio, like a better person, like here. And she's probably the injuries healed a bit, right? So anyway, going back to Evgenia, there's more stuff that needs to be done and it's going to take a long time, right? Like she needs, they need to not panic. And that's the thing is that we are at optimal panic right before Russian nationals. And there's going to be 17 voices in her head. And I'm sure Brian is starting to, he looks like he's panicking too, a little bit. Like he is having a lot of feelings and he looks stressed. He's having a lot of feelings. Even when Jason did well, like in the short, something for him is weighing on him. And it, I don't know if it's this Medvedeva like mm -hmm. status report. Yes, of course it has to be. He is yeah. getting harsher press than he's ever experienced in his career. I would say it's almost like when he split with Kim Yunan level every single time because he's the bad guy in the Russian press narrative that she's going to him and then everyone's looking at this and he has the pressure of keeping her up. But these are big changes. And the injuries, I think, like, had she not come to him injured, right? Like, had she come earlier, completely healthy, and I think she had multiple injuries over the summer to heal and deal with and doing all the shows and all of the post-Olympic, if they had a lot of time to work, they'd be a little bit further along. But we're seeing something that's, like, 15 20% baked. And, like, you look at it, and she's already, to me, she looks more grown up now than when we saw her at Autumn Classic. Like, she's become yeah. more... And I don't just mean that in, like, physically, mentally. Her entire demeanor, she's growing up. We're seeing, like, she's someone... Watching an adult. An adult. Right. And, and she went from being... Jason. She went from being a girl to being a woman. And then she's in, like, that college stage where, like, you're figuring things out and you're struggling a little bit. Like, how many of us, like, came home from winter, like, fall break or winter break and mom was like, well, you put on a couple, you know? <laughs> or, like, you know, maybe your progress report in math wasn't what it was at the beginning of the semester, but you pulled it together at the end. Like, this is all the stuff that's, like, in transition happening as you become. It's not a clean, like, <laughs> easy transition for anyone, right? Like, these are things. And a theory actually comes out ahead um in PR here mm -hmm. because again if if she had stayed with Atiri I firmly believe the results may even have been shakier mm -hmm. uh, it would I don't think it's a Brian situation mm -hmm. but now Atiri comes off unscathed because... she may have done about the same maybe if she kept doing the same technique she'd have struggles she wouldn't be winning she'd be fourth and the narrative would be different it would be like oh my god what's happening to her rather than it'd be like oh she's so traumatized about Alina winning or something yeah. it would have something instead of a teary's fault and it's it's unfortunate the poor girl i just hope that but she brian has always said this will take at least two years and i think that that's true if if the goal is but you have to stick with it and they need if if you brought sandra in to work on the short program keep bringing her in keep working on everything because i really and obviously there are so many hours in a day but she hasn't worked on the spins and you could tell i know that she was trying to work on a spin specialist last week but the focus isn't there Honestly, she lost the short program, not just because of the combination, but because of a camel and a sit position, right? right? Like, they're both failing her. And the camel, by the way, they got to work on the camel position. It is not pretty. And it's, like, bent and, like, not aesthetically pleasing. The next thing they have to do is they have to get rid of the skates. The skates are, like, the skates of a young girl. And now she's a woman. They look ridiculous. Like, they yeah. look... Like, look at the overall... If you're going to be a woman, be Carolina Costner in the designer clothes, in the 
beautiful Lori Nichol program, everything. Like, right. use your body, learn to skate like that. And Carolina had to develop over time. But, like, they're in the middle of these, like, growing pains. So, like, now the skates look, like, very girly and distracting for a woman. And, like, these are all things that, like, you but the, will... the real question, Dave, comes down to, again, what her motivations are. You know, we saw Carolina win a bronze medal at Sochi, and it was such a great event. Yeah. Now, would... <laughs> by the way but <laughs> was you robbed? Should... i don't know okay <laughs> thank you for telling us <laughs> but i mean the um the the thing about carolina and pyeongchang is like would yevgenia have thought that that is worth it to be in her future a beautifully skated well-crafted thing to be proud of that wasn't necessarily competitively technically relevant mm -hmm. and and does that interest her i don't know is she interested in pursuing this if she's looking at becoming a beautiful artist that isn't relevant technically I if she loves it. skating i think she has to find the love and she'll start to find the results they'll never she'll never in her life by the way have a season where she's going to be first 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 that doesn't happen there will always be some young girl prepubescent and in triple axles and quad lutzes yeah. right like there's always going to be someone you can get to that point now you're going to learn about peaking about skating skills about really the nuts and bolts of like preparation where it's not just a person being a machine it's a human being it's taking athletic performance look hanyu doesn't look like every every free skate and every short program isn't three thousand percent and three you're right like he has ups and downs like and for every amazing grand prix final there was a world championships with struggles or you know opposite right like or the opposite yeah. happens and like that's just life when you get to a certain level and you're winning and you can do it multiple times but not everything is just this season and we've seen it throughout history michelle kwan had that season where one tara had that season i mean uh, you and Kim had that season. Mao has that has that season. But like it, ha it starts ebbing and flowing, and it's what's realistic. So, big picture, and I feel in skating a lot of times the big picture is missed. Oh, it's missing everyone. And I was just talking to someone about it. I said this is a long game, right? But skaters, and they're also dealing with federations and fans and tons of voices, right? And very intelligent people everyone panics because we're all control freaks, right? So you say that you're going to work on things and you're going to go to Brian Orser for a long game, right? So you show up in July, everyone's happy about it, right? You go to the Autumn Classic and like you have some struggles. You show some good, after you go to, you go to your test skate, things are looking okay. You go to your Autumn Classic, there start to be some things you lose to Brady to know. Then you go to Skate Canada and oh my God, you are third. You are third. We are we are panicking. Like, what is happening, right? By the end of the Grand Prix, people are like, the long you lose game. lose to Brady Tunnell again. <laughs> and people are like, oh, oh my God, we need, to, we need to move. This is not working. Obviously, this is the fault. And it's like, no, this is a long game. We said that this was going to happen. This is what's happening. And now, but everyone involved loses the long game too because they start panicking too. And that's the problem. No and one I, trusts. Everyone is penny smart, dollar yeah. stupid in yeah. this instance. And it's just like, can you just calm down? Don't go to nationals. You know, maybe go to Europeans. Just bide your time. It's you not know? ice dance where like you get the new choreography, you get the new music, you get the new, and you start working and it starts getting better quicker, right? Like this is the nuts and bolts are going to take a lot of time and we're gonna see it i think she if she is the athlete we believe she is and as determined as we believe she is i think that we're gonna see a stronger evgenia in a year but yeah. i think it's gonna be ugly until then and it's okay and you just hope i don't mean ugly as in she i mean no, i know I ugly know. as in struggles as in yeah um uh, difficult it's an uphill battle yeah. and and i think uh, those who can who can wait, I think it's she should have the flu and like have the flu and like not Oral be able surgery. to go to, or yeah. not be able to go to Russia, be like she should have a visa issue getting out of Canada, perhaps. right? Like this is what we're in. She needs longer than a week. She needs um, some time, you know. Right. Uh, so, and uh, she needs something that'll get her sympathy. Like, like she can't get an injury. They could play that on Brian. She needs like, oh my God, she came down with like the food poisoning <laughs> or something, right? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, 
Hmm. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Morin Honda. Jonathan, I'm not mad at her. I don't like the pink oh, blades. But this, was an, this was an improvement. She actually got level four on some of the spins that she didn't get last time. Uh, the jumps were more fully rotated. They looked more trained. Raphael was happy with her. It looks to me like in a year, in if, she, progress. if yeah. she keeps believing and keeps working at the rate that she's doing or giving more and more effort and really buys in and believes in herself, I think in a year she could be in contention for the world team. I think the contention for the Japanese world team, I think right now you have three spots that are all but sewn up. Uh, Rika, um, Sato, Satoko, and um, Ka Kaori, I think, are the three that are going to go with Mai Mihara going to four continents and maybe going to worlds if someone is injured or sick or something and also fighting for a spot if someone has... Uh, you know, a rough nationals. I think that that's what that situation looks like. I think Wakaba is not, I think she's been injured. I don't think she's really in contention unless she shows up looking amazing. Um, and if she does show up looking amazing, which is a possibility, it's a possibility, but it would take a great deal of effort at this juncture. I, I think she would knock Sakamoto off. Possibly. With some, with some ease if she really showed up. Um, yeah. Because I love her short this year, even though mm -hmm. it's unconventional. I kind of like what it is. Um, I think it's there, but it would take a it would take a real image reboot. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think in that terms, that's what's happening there. Um, I think Marin, I see improvement in the technique, in um, the rotation, and the belief in herself. She looked like she was really struggling at Skinny America. Obviously, she had an injury at that time, but it looks like she's. Um, it looks like one of those things where she's been in hell and she's starting to come out and being like, oh, this is possible again. My career isn't over, right? right. Like, I can... I I'm can... not a lost cause. Right. Yeah. And I don't think that she is. Um, the knee bend is the best. The overall exquisite, you know? You know, Ensu and Marin are like my two nephews. Love them both, right? Okay. But sometimes throughout seasons and throughout holidays, one becomes my favorite at different times, right? <laughs> Jojo was having some real five-year-old annoying tendencies over the summer when we were on vacation and Christopher was becoming my favorite because even though he has meltdowns, he was younger and sweet and really fun to be around when Jojo wasn't fun to be around because Jojo, like me, works himself to the bone, gets too excited and then doesn't want to take a nap when he needs to take a nap and he can become a bear. And okay. Christopher can be... A lot of fun during those times so over the summer jojo was you know moving from preschool to kindergarten and he was having some immature moments and acting out and having and i'd be like why are you crying because we're going to the beach instead of going to the pool like we can do both and like i'll take you to the pool you just have to wait like 30 minutes like he was really having like some time on vacation and he was like acting out for attention and doing all sorts of things christopher i was he was my favorite for those couple of months. I have to say, he was being, still loved them both, but he was on top. Um, so who is who in this scenario? That's the intriguing Well, part. this is what I'm talking <laughs> about. So then at the holiday, sometimes, like on Thanksgiving, Jojo, like Christopher was being shy and like not saying hello to people yet. So Jojo and I were playing games together and having a nice time. Then later, Jojo got wound up and he was becoming a little bit of a five-year-old, but he's like matured more now. And then his brother was being cute and wanted to do this so like with marin and ensu ensu as a junior was like under rotating and having these problems and now she's excelling with raf and marin was like really like struggling like she was having the jojo issues but like now i can see that like there's light under the tunnel and like there's more of a competition we're coming if we just stay the course i think marin will be this beautiful skater. I mean, look, the all pink look needs to go. The pink blades, the pink costume, the pink. Even the music for for me, you know, she responded, Marin responded so well to the music in the short program because it woke her up. Mm -hmm. It's that idea where you want to infuse energy in some of these skaters that seem lackluster perhaps on and off the ice. And I felt like um, the short program inspired her, gave her that inner pulse. I used to say this about Jeremy. Jeremy would skate to these like lilting, beautiful pieces and then he would, laid back into the music a bit 
Um, and Marin does the same because she listens to the music and then it just sets like a lovely energy instead of a fighter energy, which it's clear is important to her to, to finish the giants. I think that she should keep uh, the short program for next season and get a new free skate and focus on other things that's going on in her training. Like, I think like they just need to keep going and like focus on what they can do at this point. And the short program, I think, is perfect. And I think it'll actually grow as she matures. So, And I think that the, the results and the scores mm -hmm. are ultimately the biggest motivator. And to, mm -hmm. see, to see that when she put forth an effort, mm -hmm. they, they were there for her. I, I mean, yeah. I still think her PCS is, is lower than I would give it based on the sheer skating. But, I understand but she's been inconsistent and she did have two triples. Yeah. And then Raphael even told her, he said, if you landed two triples, first of all, she'd have about 10 more points in technical right. she'd have a couple more points in program components as well that's just the reality yeah. of the situation it would get better um so she would have had like in the 140s and it would be like right. you'd be like oh my god like he is a genius yeah. so right. and i think she right. could be there by march but i don't think she'll get that opportunity to this season but i think that next season it'll be um fantastic right. so yeah. uh my mihara I think she's being temporarily consistent. I don't think we're seeing any long-term gains, but I could see her being the kind of fourth place skater that kind of moves into third. Like she sh she could get the Tanya Kwiatkowski opportunity. It's just- I was just gonna refer to her as Tanya Kwiatkowski, <laughs> more consistent, but um, <clears throat> because again, she's doing her job at just, when you are up against such a national team like that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's you can't you can't be ordinary and in my opinion her her program components are slightly ordinary she's very um, nice she's a nice skater the jumping is lovely they do a good job with the music mm -hmm. the music is helping mask the music gives you just a whimsical vibe when you see a girl like having fun skating around and then when you look closely you're like what is she doing with her feet what is she doing with her arms what is she doing with her knee bend here with her fingers um, you know like it's yeah, all it, those details are are not there the face is not you, there yeah, you know and it just gives you a generically nice feeling an inoffensive mm -hmm. um nice skate yeah but it's not memorable she's not pushing her way onto the and podium not gonna cut it when you have compatriots like that yeah. that you are competing against holy cow you know what yeah. i mean so. so i think yeah and talking about holy cow rika kahira here mistake in the short program but not one that knocked her out, comes back right. again, that free skate. I know you has to be a little bit freaked out about the pop on the triple axel because that means you're having some issues with the jump and mentally this is getting in your head. But I have to say the free skate overall, the sum of the parts, the detail, the attention to detail and training every day, you could tell that that program is so trained that even if she has a mistake, the other elements are so there and of such high quality, completely saved her got her a win here when maybe normally she wouldn't have won a Grand Prix in another right. field. But the fact that she has those spins at level four, the program is fantastic. You know, she's, everything is so good overall. One or two mistakes didn't kill her here. And I think no, she's- No, I mean, and that's the thing you were talking about, Yevgenia's score in the short program. Mm -hmm. I mean, and okay, yeah, all three of them were even around the 67 mark, but Rika didn't get dinged for it. She full blown didn't get any credit for yeah. that Axel. So I, I mean, the judges are really are, are really coming around to her too. And the skating is nice. She interests me consistently, she, even though I understand she, we're not talking about the level of these tocos and things like yeah. that. But there is uh, there is attention being paid to it. She's just not at the elite level of it yet. The free skate is getting there. The free skate is really coming alive in a way that's, her her short program is very nice. It's nice. Right. The free skate is interesting, right? Like it has- Yes, yeah. with unique moves and like little hops and transitions that match perfectly with the music. And that's better than someone who's just doing it, mm -hmm. but not quite to that fully extended beautiful way, but she's on the path to it. It's I don't not know at the satirical level of greatness, but it, it's, it's doing the work that she'll need to get there, right? Like it's moving into the, she's moving, she's interacting yet with the music. It's, it's far superior to Satoko, um, to Mai Mihara, mm -hmm. to those, those two, and Wakaba. I think yeah. it's, it is, it is greater than that. Well, because of all of the, um, I think it, look, if Satoko did that program, it would be like, oh my God, you know, like. We I, would... And that's the thing, because you see the material potential mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I think it'll it'll get her there. Because she's not an outward person by nature, but she's growing, right? Like, she's growing yeah. in terms of her performance level. Um, she's growing. And the programs are being catered to her, because in the same way, they're not giving her, like, a a pizzazz kind of thing. They're giving her beautiful and, and so, unique kind of thing. And I think she wasn't, not that she wasn't always beautiful, but she's, I think she's a trainer and a competitor. Like, she yeah. is someone that goes out there and per- goes for it. And I think she's learning to go for the performance. And that she, triple axel save, Dave, that was, I was like, okay, she is in it. I Uta, lo- Uta would be very happy with her. She would be <laughs> like, yes, Rika, my girl, petting her. Oh, you're so, so beautiful. You know, yeah. This is, yeah, I mean, that, that was guts. So Yeah, I'm happy with her. I think um, I think she's in it for the, to peak at the final uh, and nail it. Or nail it at and I think it's important she did the triple axel, even with the scratch, you know, the mm-hmm. savy kind of landing, yeah. because if she had popped that and in the short and in the long and then doubled the other one, now we've created an issue. But she did do it. It was just a little scratchy. Yeah. So I'll take it. She'll be, she'll be fine. I think she'll be good at the final. I think she'll be primed and ready to go because she has to, I don't think she's, look, she's not, Zagitova is favored to win the final, but she is someone who her role on every practice session is to get into Zagitova's head. She needs to go and just be landing triple axel after triple axel after triple axel, right? And triple front, axel, triple toe. Like, right in yeah, front of yeah. Zagitova and being like, oh, that was nothing. You know, like, that is... Like, well, pardon me, that was bigger than I thought it was going to be. I'm so sorry <laughs> I mean, to get in your way. Your you know, way. like, yeah. <laughs> if she could, like, cut her off and be like, oh, <laughs> boom. You know, that's... Yeah. That's her job. In yeah. the same way that that was what Evgenia Medvedeva did when she was against Gracie Gold and like was like doing triple lots, triple toe, triple lots, triple toe, triple toe at like Skate America right in front of her, like all the time. And, and it worked. And it worked. It was getting it like, it was like she did it at Skate America at the final by Worlds. I mean, it just, that's what Rika needs to do. And this is yeah. how we, um, this is how we play, Jonathan. This is exactly. even if she doesn't we play to win. Okay. Even if she doesn't win the Grand Prix final, you could win the practice session and then go on and win worlds when it like really counts. Yeah, she may not win the battle, but she may win the war. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because there are vulnerabilities there. Um and we love a good fight. I want to see Zagitova come out and be Carmen and, you know, give her fight. So I think it's gonna be really exciting. Uh I think moving ahead, I'm curious to see. I think this performance level is going to keep getting better. Hopefully they work with Tom again on the programs and keep moving forward. Um, I think in terms of uh, the other ladies here, it, uh, Sotskova, it's, it's falling apart. Um, uh, it's not going great. And they, I mean, I saw the outrageously colorful outfit uh, for the short and I was like, this is, I see, I see you. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I see you trying to infuse personality through wardrobe because you might not be getting it otherwise. But um, my sentimental kind of kind, um, I don't want to say kindness. Well, how do I want to say this? Uh, I used to root for her sentimentally in a way, mm. in a yeah. way. And now it's, um, it's a bit rough and I, it, sometimes I don't know. There are nice qualities to her skating. Like Buyanova does, um, Buyanova, who competed at the 84 Olympics and Peggy Fleming thought that her skates were dirty, dirty boots. Um, she thought, like, she, well, Sotskova has beautiful skating skills that you can really see. Uh, yeah, during... she takes care of with the edges and she, yeah. she, it's clear their priorities are are nice ones, but mm-hmm. it, it's somehow there's, there's certainly a cap on that. Yes. Um, I would also look at... Um, Konstantinova is she's like muted to me she's like a muted fabric I'm like not super invested in it it's just not yes I wasn't understanding her placement over um, Marin that mm. was yeah that was the PCS over Marin was particularly bad one. now what do you think about Brady Tunnell um, at this juncture uh, to me so Brady has had chronic back issues for several years. This is not a secret. When we talked to Benoit, he was mentioning that it was a problem. So to me, I'm like, if someone like Brady has back issues that are going to hamper the training from event to event, 
is this the time to be doing the new combination? Like, I know people well, are- why, now, why do you think they decided, we've seen it in Instagram videos, it's very impressive, but look how easy it was for her to pull out that triple flip, triple toe, like nothing. And mm -hmm. I find it very hard to believe she could have done a triple flip, triple mm -hmm. loop as easily. So I don't know why in the short, especially you wouldn't just go with what you know. The amount of point increase cannot possibly be worth Because the raising. GOE will never be the same because her other thing was so nice. I think that they could have actually raised the GOE of the other of the, with the toe, right? Yeah. In a way that I don't think they're going to raise the GOE with the Lutz loop because it looks like because it's always going to be Because now we're back to just getting it there. Yeah. Like, it's just like, just try to do it instead of she... Now, I don't know if it's because it became elusive to her later last season, the, the Lux mm -hmm. Toe or something like that, but I, I wonder if they'll go back. It's the same it. way with Evgenia. I almost think that she should do the triple loop with the arms over her head and do a beautiful entrance, exit, and to the get, triple loop in the short and get a plus four, plus five, because we're not right. getting that on, on the flats. That's We're right. being generously called on it. So... Right, so I think with Brady, I would go that way and get all the the GOE points that you could get because they really add up. And uh, I think that overall, her short, if they just went back to the old, I know that they were trying to do it to get the base value to try to get a higher, but to me, like that's the Megan New Hamill approach, or you could do the Taras Morozov approach of getting the GOE, and I, I think in or the Aliona Olympic. And in uh, this, you know, Megan wasn't competing under this kind of GOE yeah. system so much. So I, I think I agree with you that it would behoove her to do the best one she can, not the most difficult. She can. Yeah, I think the GOE will the quality. We'll look at Jason Brown. So I think with Brady, I think that they need to work on the skating skills for next season. the The hair was much better. She looked much more senior. Much better, and and I know that sounds silly, but suddenly because she looked I'm, senior and sophisticated and i do you think that she saw phil hirsch say and look she's a hometown girl phil hirsch should be more into her like the way he was into gracie because he was so behind gracie gold wins gold all of that bs by the way we got well, that's when he was writing for the chicago tribune yes. also so there then i'm sure the paper itself loved that connection also. he would be more behind brady but and i thought i thought phil lost his mind um, because he gave up on Brady to now after the short program and said that Mariah Bell was going to win nationals. First of all, if you think anyone's going to win nationals over Brady to I would look at Alyssa Liu and think that the USFS may lose their mind and just think that we could have a Tracy Wayman situation that this will somehow work out. Um, I think if you're looking at this, Brady to came back like a fighter in that free uh, skate and look, not everything is perfect, but I think they should bring in Benoit I don't know what she does. I would have an ice dancer working with her all the time. And I think that with Brady, I know that the programs are so angular and they're a little forced and like trying to learn. And I think- but You know what it means? What they could have done, Dave, is yeah. they could have gone safe. generic loveliness safe that hid all of it. And it just kind of left you feeling bland. Yeah. And even though she probably isn't necessary, I think she's doing the best she can. I think yeah. she's giving real effort to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like a, a lack of trying no. that's happening. Um, I think they are at least giving her something that makes you watch, yes. even if it's not being done as well as other people may be able to right. do it. Whereas if she got that wash and put on some WC mm -hmm. and we just kind of, you know, took a little nap during her performance. Suts go it, it, you know, yeah. If she suts go it, or, or Paulina Edmonds did it, you know, like it, it, it would be tough. The only thing choreographically that gets on my nerves a little bit is with these complex spins that are very difficult to get the levels mm -hmm. and you know the positive GOEs on, I don't care for trying to end a program with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it happened to Brady and it happens to everyone because there are real time penalties here, but there are yeah. real penalties if you haven't finished the amount of rotations for each position. So now all of a sudden I feel like all of these big climactic finishes are rushed and like they're trying to stop quickly. I wish they would do it and then let themselves have one moment that isn't, they're not worried about the timing. Brady Tanell is the kind of skater who is so trained and clearly does her run through that she could do a back spiral, lower the leg and go into a double axle and land it on the music. Like she yes. is just that kind of skater because she's so trained and mentally strong, right? Like right. she's mentally tough that you could enhance what she's doing. 
overall, I want her to soften the knee, and that's really hard for someone who's so driven and tall and everything. But I think that they, if they keep working on her skating skills, that it will get better. So that's why I would bring in Benoit, bring in a nice dancer, and she's in a good place. Get new dresses for the free... Like, just for national, show up in Lisa McKinnon. Just let Lisa design it. Yeah. Um, don't even tell her what to do. Yeah, just say let, go. And I'll, I'll be posting that interview this week because I interviewed Lisa and talked to her. I had to edit it together. Um, just let her be so sophisticated. Um, and I was watching Elisabetta Kulik at uh, Pacific Coast, and she wasn't really landing the jumps, but she looked like the most put-together, sophisticated girl at the sectionals because Katya was clearly in charge of all of this. This is what we need. Like, we need just... Well, because it gives you that, in a world of PCS and objectivism mm-hmm. and all of these sorts of things that happen, um, mm-hmm. it, why not trick us into doing it? Right. I and mean, with... so many things are tricks, we understand, but why not... And that's yeah. why I would say the hair... It, it it's the finishing tight. touch of the look, Right. Yeah, it just puts someone in a different category without you even realizing it. It was so sophisticated, and it made me think of her anew. Yeah, you take, them in a, you take them a little bit more seriously. Skating is a game, Jonathan, as much as it is a competition, and it's you have to do the whole, the whole thing. is a whole yeah. shtick. The whole perception thing. You know what she could do? I think she should do? Do the Lisa McKinnon dress that she gave to Alexa for um i think she should do a dress like the muted lavender that alexa wore at the olympics for the ghost program and she should wear that at nationals with the beautiful hair and do uh the romeo and juliet to it maybe like a maroon ish color but like come out and be beautiful and just just because when when i saw her walking around the Mm -hmm. arena Mm-hmm. in San Jose. I stopped and I was like, oh, that girl's pretty. Who is that? And mm-hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, it's mm-hmm. it's Brady. Mm-hmm. But I, I had no idea because it's such a severe kind of thing they were going mm-hmm. for. But in real life, she actually really does have some, some beautiful qualities that, mm-hmm. that weren't being brought out before, just aesthetically, yeah. that made, made that emphasized the idea of a scrappy, hardworking um, mm-hmm. newbie yeah. to the scene instead of an established um, medalist, you know? Yeah, that's what I would do. But I think, yeah, just go for the points. I mean, and kudos to her. She came out and she fought. Now, the flip on the diagonal to me with the questionable rotation, they're trying to, I think they're trying to get the, in, the, the word about the edge, but I think doing it on the diagonal, as she do, is like the rotation. So you have to like pick your poison, what you're going for. Um, but uh, that's, I don't know. I wish more can... people would use this, Denise. Because, I, I, I mean, it seems like there's some real good mm-hmm. fundamental coaching happening there. Between I don't think Denise and we, Jeremy we, and, yeah. Yeah, I think the whole combination, um, in a world where we see everyone flock to the same, it might be an interesting Yeah, option. An interesting option. Yeah. So, uh, the men, I, the men was not the best event here, but there were some real standouts. And I want to give real props before we go into the top men. I've been tracking this throughout the season know he will as well and i don't know if we i don't remember if we've talked about him but the kevin amos free skate now i looked and it said that it was choreographed by john and sylvia but did they like watch Ciceron and create this and like uh, the Ciceron influence in this free dance is like so much whether we're just all being so french together and I, I, which i feel <laughs> i feel we are so french but i'm so in love with this free skate is it? It's and it's all about the slides that change direction. It's as if he changed the game and what we can do in a choreographic and footwork sequence. Like we all are in this box, and then Kevin Amos was like, "I will be French," and like he not only French but also fresh. I, I yes. mean, it was just like something totally different in a world where we're seeing so much of the same. You automatically have my attention if it's merely different. Now the program is so interesting. I think the jump technique would put Frank in an early grave, but... The jump technique is also interesting. (laughs) It's very French. It's very Philippe Candeloro where you're like... I think you should probably not try that triple jump and throw your shirt off now, I guess. Yes. (laughs) But I root for him in spite of it, and this program is carrying him, and everyone loves it, and I think he's going to have a successful second half of the season. I'm... I'm into it. I'm so, uh, 
encouraged and it's something new and it's something fresh and it's yeah i uh it's my moment samarin i'm not into it all like i have to tell you it's it feels like uh and i don't well how could i not mean it rude but Mm -hmm. i i just it's a struggle for me to make it through the performances like uh, sometimes for those like the men i did not watch live Mm -hmm. so i went back and, and watched each clip and it felt like homework to watch him yeah yeah, it's just, it doesn't do it for me. I'm not into it. Um, Aliyev really had a great free skate here. Had not have the short program that, uh... oh, <laughs> what is that? I had one at the ready. I just, I just, I mean, ugh. even though I know that there's inconsistencies, I just sit back and I'm like, ah, oh, it's, it's Dimitri time. And it's not even like when I'm creepy about all the Paris guys. Like, it's mm-hmm. not about that at all. It's just like, I just love this he has a point of view he has something to say he's emoting he is open he doesn't hit an ugly position except for when he's falling on the quads Mm. but but there's a real talent here and i I would love for an aliyev koliata podium finish at euros like this is this is forming a very interesting european championships for me where in the past i did not find um the europeans in the men's division that exciting and Mm -hmm. and i'm very much looking forward to i'm even into french nationals now i'm have you noticed that romain poncert is becoming like an (laughs) interest well yes mariah bell like locked out there but he's becoming like a very uh good skater like he's really been improving with Raphael, and it seems to be clicking right now after but like like we're seeing and you have always mentioned about centralized training centers Mm -hmm. Raphael is becoming, with an influx of international skaters versus U.S. skaters, it's becoming a real wheelhouse of, of talent. Yeah, here. and they're and obviously ultimately growing. Like Breshna and Voronov and, and uh, you know, who's coming in and out from week to week and Poncer to Nathan and uh, Kolyadat, like they're all benefiting from each other and learning from one another. And that's, and I think there's some well, real camaraderie there. And yeah. it's, it's it's beneficial. He's really improved, and Mariah's improving, and it's it's getting it's getting good. I'm into it. I'm into it. Yeah, there also, like it's it's really yeah. becoming a thing that doesn't seem oversaturated, which we'll talk about in one of the other divisions. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. Disciplines. Uh, I keep calling them divisions, but um, and I have to say, Jason Brown. So I really think Tracy Wilson just wanted Jason Brown in her life, like when you could see, like when she's like so maternal to him, and like. I think her sons are probably so like machismo and then she gets like the a sensitive more, bird, a sensitive yeah. <laughs> bird. Like I think she just needed it in her Canadian life. Yeah. I'm, I'm very into Tracy Wilson, you know, because she's our old friend who's been commentating for so long and she's so we've Canadian. Been with her since, we've been with her since Rob McCall. We've been with her. Yeah. We've been with her like to watch Jose Schwinnard skate to the sweater and she'd be like letting us know about what was happening on that performance. I really feel like she and Vern are our old friends. And when we see her in the kiss and cry, and I love her facial expressions, by the way, when Evgenia's like, who's in first? And she's like, it doesn't matter. Mai Mihara. And you're like, (laughs) yes. Yeah, that was good. Mm hmm, okay. (laughs) She's all about the. She, like, she and I, like, both do with the turn a lot. And she really is like, hmm. And, like, her face is, like, nothing is everything. This Tracy Wilson, you're one of my favorite people in skating. By the way, just to have to say, like, Absolutely. she is excellent member of the team. As much as I'm into that Gislan and Brian, like, competing with one another for right. Hanyu's love. Um, I'm really into this. Um, she really loves Jason Brown. You could tell Brian was, like... Hesitant. There was a hesitation she, there. Because you know okay. he's... He's like quad, 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 quad. Like he is totally into this, like, we need to do jumps, you know? And by the way, Gogolev is no longer Brian's. We, that was like, he's just a Lee Barkel situation. Oh, so is Lee taking him to the Junior Grand Prix? Yes, Final? because he has like oh. Russian parents who I think want the more attention. But again, we were saying he was traveling a lot and there's a lot of, you know, things were people oversaturated how much time can you be when you're going to every junior grand prix and training everyone right so and i don't think look i think all things could be mended i think gay men are emotional (laughs) and we can all Uh, (laughs) i could hate you you. (laughs) i could hate you and love you again and it's fine if there was love there so um 
Yeah. I think Jason, though, one scratchy triple axel and a double Lutz that should have been a triple, but the rest looks credible to me. Oh, and, and the, the short program was the thing they claimed they were doing previously. Their Olympic strategy of do what you can and do it as best as you can, which they kept saying they were doing last season. But this was flip was game. like plus four, plus five level. Even for a triple flip, it was so fabulous. Um, yeah, and now there is real quality to the elements, even though they're... And this was the Rokin program, by the way. I and think... I, and I will give, give the credit where credit is due because... For so long, I thought, oh, Rohin and Jason, we've seen it. We've we were crying it. in Grenoble over the beauty of this performance. Okay, so this was... Last year. <laughs> 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 okay, but it's it's just a matter of like, the, Rohin well, was reinvigorated or yeah. something. I don't know if he was showing off for the Toronto crew or what he knew. He, this was a great marriage of create creative minds that worked, in my opinion, far more successfully than the program that David did. I think he needs to spend more time with David. I would bring in Sandra. They are collaborating so wonderfully. The Evgenia Shore program, when they when she was working with both of them, was more successful. They just did this Kim Yuna show, or sorry, the, the Javier show in um, in Spain that Kim Yuna is going to be in. Um, and they're now, I think they should work together on Jason to bring out the the that whatever. next level and they got to get a better costume for the free skate it, it reminds me of something that brian orser wore at like it's like hideous in a boxy way at the 92 world pro um and, and i know that <laughs> this may be like a <laughs> follow me on it he had like a checkered okay. bowling shirt going on there and it was okay. equally hideous um because jason brown is such a svelte like and he's become very muscular and you could see in the um jordan the former ice dancer who does the ice perspectives he really captured jason working on that triple axle and you could see how ripped he is jason is not a boxy person but this the aesthetic and that the free I what jason creates are exquisite lines pointed toes. and it like cuts it off like the line i'm like looking it. at like a short torso and leg and booty and and like the lot i'm so confused by it this. detracts from what he he does so beautifully he needs to like paul he, wiley paul wiley should design these costumes for jason they could be like all monochromatic flow um yeah but this that shows it off the best it's easiest to see against the ice when he was just wearing he beautiful. needs to alex johnson it whatever alex johnson yeah. is wearing at nhk borrow that costume jason and just right. be simon and garfunkel less on the nose we don't need to be on the nose or do a stripe just one stripe, you know, like yeah. one of my sweaters that I bought. Um, and we could um, we could do that. I don't think that we need to be so on the nose, Simon and Garfunkel, for us to get it, right? Let the music be beautiful and just take you there. Because it's an unconventional uh, Simon and Garfunkel uh, yeah. cut, you know what I mean? So be, be unconventional. It's totally fine. I think as long as he lands the triple lots at Nationals, he's going to Worlds. I actually, I would put him ahead of Vincent Zoe. I really would. Yeah. I really I would. would. I, I know. There's a question. So with the judges, I think. With the points and the negative GOEs and the skating skills and the, there's enough in there in that program. I think he could beat him. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree. And he's someone, you know, it's so funny. We thought that if Genya was do or die at this Grand Prix, so was Jason Brown. Like we were starting to look at who else could go to Worlds. He bought himself a whole nother year here. Like he... Is more in this so and, it's, and this is the new system at work i don't yeah. know that this would have gotten him a silver medal in previous years but i think he will I, I probably get did. he'll at least get the bronze right like he's going for silver but we'll get the bronze and as long as he shows up trained and ready to go and sticks on this path so right. i'm into it um but let's talk about nathan chen who desperately needs to like be with Raphael full time because Hanyu is in or out of the final in Japanese nationals. And this is the time when they need to be working together and capitalizing on, <laughs> frankly, the fact that Hanyu is a little injured and this is his time to be the star. It's I was his... going to look this up because I was trying to figure out who the first alternate is. Um, for it is Keegan Messing. Well, isn't that... I did remember reading that, and I'll just leave it at that. Okay. And I told Doug Haw on the phone, I said, look, it's karma for Canada. Because, and hear me out, 
as U.S. fans, we were likely insufferable about how good our ladies were forever. I'm sure that if you were from another country, you were like, I can't stand hearing about it. This is karma that we cannot get a top lady who has everything in order and is competitive because of that. And like God's sick joke on us was the Gracie Gold situation where we have the girl with the name and the look and the big jumps who just doesn't put it together. Right? It's the, and then we have Ashley with the personality, but the other, like, it's like karma. Canada not making any of the group of fans, they have been so insufferable about about the thank you, the thanking of Canada and the tour and how great their generation is and their fluff pieces and like <laughs> you no one in the final. <laughs> what a difference a year makes. It's just same thing like the Magnificent Seven in gymnastics. We had that tour and then we were sixth in the white leotards where we looked enormous in Lausanne. Like this in a mess. Like <laughs> Okay. It's just karma. It is like we <laughs> cannot get. <laughs> a good, this is like, I'm sorry, Canada. Like, I do love you and I do want to thank Canada. But like, you did have some wins at the Worlds that were questionable for a long time. And this is Canada's um, moment <laughs> to be in a little bit of a drought situation. Okay. This is okay. Although Keegan was so good. So you were having a coughing episode because Skig Canada was... I literally choked on your Canadian commentary. Dustin, it was nothing shady. Jonathan just was not breathing. Okay, so (laughs) I think, yeah, I think, Nathan, this is the time. Jonathan, the quads sometimes look a little dicey, but he had great quads in the free skate. Obviously, that's what saved him here. But the lot, we don't see a quad lots. We don't see quad sow cow. Like, we're trying to maintain and make it through, but... I'm and not... I, I'm, I'm obsessed with the short program. I love it. Yeah. And uh, I find, I find Lori, um, it was a bit of more of the same. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it didn't really do anything new for me, the free. But I did notice that these Wait, this year? Five, yeah. Did Romain Pulsaire even... did it with him. The free. Not Jose, Romain Hagenur did it with him. Yes, the Nathan free. Oh, I'm really sorry. Because I, I looked it up because The I ISU thought... is wrong, and that's why all the commentators are getting it wrong. It was listed incorrectly. Unless, oh, unless that ISU Lori... database is terrible. Because even when I was trying to look up other people's choreographers and stuff like that... So this happened trying... to you, Kirk Browning, me on one of the videos, and like ever... Okay. Yeah. So it's listed wrong. And I don't know if he did it for touch-ups that Romain did it or why it's listed wrong. I don't know the why it's wrong, but it, it that's you're going to get okay. killed if you say that. Just to let you know, Nathan's got a lot of fans that are really into this. So, Oh, okay. But I just, I just happen to love the short program so much. and it's, Except for that fans. vest, but yes, you know. Ah, uh, you know, I'm kind of like, meh. You know, so in that, in the caravan, when it mm-hmm. starts and it goes, that first note kind of does a real, Wah. It's all about the shoulders. Well, but that, so that's in the weird kind of sound effect-y bit. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> It, great. It sets us up. It pulls us in. It's creating a mood. It's a little fun. It lets us know we should smile for this one. And then the minute it starts on that opening note of that, wow, and he does a huge, a huge edge, and it's just sexy and deep. And I'm giving him all the PCS that I can give him from that get go because it's musical and it's a deep edge. Now, do you has has there been commentary on? the reduction of more difficult quads or as we just oh, observed, this is just our thing. observation and obviously oh. you could tell he's sticking with what's going on really well for him throughout now right. he was doing right. more of them earlier at champs camp and stuff but he's this is what happens when you skate on your own let's right. be honest why do you think michelle only coached herself for one season because her jumps were not the same in salt lake as they were uh in oh, 2001 they? worlds you know yeah mm-hmm. and um Shep and Danny, we never blamed them for this publicly because we wouldn't because we're Michelle, but I'm sure privately at Thanksgiving, we bring this up from time to time, it gets a little heated, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> you ever notice she's always traveling with the mother and never with Danny? You know? Yeah. Remember that time Danny told you to get rid of Frank Carroll because he wanted too much of a yeah. cut or whatever? Remember when Danny ruined your 1997 entire season to get a couple of bucks from a blade? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think that that's... <laughs> That's exactly what's that going on. Thing. 
yeah. yeah. So I think with Nathan, with him, uh, co- like coaching himself, like I think that um, this experiment has run its course. Um, it could run it uglier if we want to continue another semester. But um, what's so funny is that someone, one of our fans, Jennifer, who's hilarious, wrote to us. I don't know if she wants to be mentioned, so I won't mention her free last name. But she said <laughs> that she just had a laughing moment to herself because everyone's been trying to figure out why Phil Hirsch is pushing this narrative so much that Nathan needs to be at Yale. And this will be fine. Phil Hirsch went to Yale, so he feels now cosmically connected oh, to Nathan. Oh, okay. That makes a lot more sense. Even and though, no one's saying don't go to Yale. They're just saying... Even though Priscilla Gilman's like, Yale's not one of those Ivies where you get in and then you get the A because you paid the bill. Like, this is like, they're going to nail you, right? So, I just, this is... And he was with... Uh, Roth last week in Russia working, I don't know if he was there the whole week, but he flew there to train with him and they were with Tarasva and then they were in France. Like, this is... And Dave, okay, let's just think for a second about a flight from New Haven, Connecticut, the travel yeah. from New Haven, Connecticut to Moscow. It, it's going to take several days any, yeah. in and of itself, let alone the training there and the travel back. And like, then he ha- and obviously we're getting close to finals in college. This is when we'd be panicking over Thanksgiving. Like you're having fun, but you're ready to get back because you're like, oh my God, we have to get back. And then you, because remember like Thanksgiving, like you have fun at home and you're like Friendsgiving and like you're, and then you get back and you're so happy to see your college friends again. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, we have to get ready for finals. Like right away. Like the fun stops so quickly. This is like. You know, I have no idea what you're talking about because my experience was totally different. All right. So I'll I'll tell you about the stress (laughs) differently. Okay. Or like when you have these like big papers to write in journalism and like everything, like the pressure starts, like it starts to feel like the tie is strangling your neck when you realize that you have like this 25 page paper. And where does one carry stress? in their body yeah. through tightness and rigidity or through getting sick or through not sleeping yeah. enough. And all of these things, of course, would in effect such an elite level athlete. Obviously there are high level college athletes all the time. They just happen to be competing and training with the finest at their own collegiate facility. Jonathan, I do a lot of consultation work unofficially for some gymnastics teams. Let me be really honest about this. Yeah. As much as Suzanne is trying to tell me that Georgia is really difficult and that the girls aren't doing well in psychology freshman year because they're, it's just so difficult and these girls didn't go to real school. Um, let's be real. Like, this is not the same caliber as Yale, okay? Georgia's doing very well academically, but like, Suzanne, you're not spitting me on this one, okay? Like... These girls also. Uh, it's a lot. Just... It's a lot in a time commitment. But like, yeah. I knew a lot of people that were fencing for Duke. Like, also like the amount of time and the the what level are you taking? Of education. You could go to a great school like Penn State, and like, even if you're on the team there, because I used to tutor athletes, a lot of them are taking like the science class. Literally, the gymnasts on the freshman, and I was looking because I was nervous about science and wanted my high GPA and wanted to focus on other things, and I didn't want science to bring me down. There are classes that the athletes take where it is literally the girls on the, cause you needed to take nine credits of science at Penn state. They got a three credit science class without a lab for watching movies about natural disasters and writing about them. Yeah. They, I mean, obviously they're trying to help. <laughs> Jonathan, <laughs> they watched deep impact. Then there's the unofficial Geminology 112, which is Rocks for Jocks. Um, that was another... Like, Nathan, I don't think, is taking these classes. He's not an no, actual athlete wouldn't. at Yale either, you know? Like, and he's trying to go to med school after this, so he can't be taking these classes. There's... It's just too hard. Like, Debbie Thomas, I believe, was burning the candle at both ends and always struggling. And, like, she wasn't competing under the IJS. But that's how she liked it also. Yeah. And she'll tell you, like, I mean, whether or not we believe that's true. She thought it was almost too relaxed at the Olympics, and that's why... I don't think anyone the... can tell Debbie anything. So, um, yeah. Correct. Correct. But... Um, these are know, eyes. What is it? Wait, these are ears. These are ears. These are ears. Remember when Ianla told, us, told her that? I was... You know, I've tried to block the whole thing because I loved her so much. It's too... It's hard to watch. <laughs> um, I love Ianla too. My... Debbie, I like in a frustrating way. Um, but some people run towards chaos. And, mm-hmm. and it would appear someone like Tanya was that person. Someone like uh, Debbie was that person. 
Nathan doesn't strike me as someone who revels in chaos. And he's a little bit, he's, he's rebellious for a type A person who will go to med school, right? Like, so he'll have long hair, right? Like he's rebellious in like a meaning Which like, I thought was much improved here. Yeah, oh, great. It was great. Yeah. And it was, right, like he's rebellious in the way that an elite athlete who's training every day, who is like working, like to be one of the best in the world is like slightly just like a little rebellion, right? Like this is a mini rebellion and this is like, yeah. A safe rebellion. <laughs> so he'll be, he'll be fine. I think, I don't know. Like it'll be really, we'll be watching. It'll be watching. Yeah. But this is the time to kind of like maybe pull out of the spring semester and go capture this world title. And it's also the thing that happens in skating sometimes about watching the skating. Mm -hmm. You know, some of these journalists, and I like Phil. I, I, I do I like Phil. Phil. I do. Sure. But like, we take issue someone, with him the same way anyone who's strong, so opinionated. Opinion. Yeah. yeah. So if if you look on paper, Nathan won both events. Nathan goes to the Grand Prix final. Nathan landed quads. Everything is fine. Look, he can do both on paper. And I feel some people look at, at it that way. And then if you get rid of it and you're actually watching the skating and you realize the result doesn't matter. Yeah so much it's it's what is actually happening and you're like okay he's holding on mm -hmm. but nathan nathan is capable of so much more than holding on yeah you know? sticking around um sticking around <laughs> yeah let's see what so happens. yeah with nathan i think it's interesting because he watered down that free skate that free skate that was so special has become completely like muted and this is when we'd be going back and getting touch-ups like i romaine was at the competition I wonder if he gave him notes on the free skate or if he just like. Or if they shut it out for the time being. Yeah. yeah. Because that, that is, that program could be so special and he could win the world, by the way. Even like he could really, oh, yeah. he, he need, but his quality is not at Hanyu's quality. Hanyu is going for plus five on anything. Nathan's trying to survive at this point. And that's the difference. So. And, and let's see, it's, it's such a fascinating thing to think about the trajectory of a season. Because are they letting this be okay and safe and, and kind of bare minimum for now yeah. so that they can rev it up later? Will and he does up? have like, you know, his body's not a hundred percent. He has long-term injuries, hip problems, everything, you know, that when right. you do unlimited right. quads. So they have to save him too. And when he can do the many quads as he can. So that's another thing to look at, but I'm curious to follow this and where it goes. It's going to be really interesting the next couple of weeks. Him, Shoma Uno, will Hanyu be at the final? How will this all work? So, yeah. Um, as far as the pairs go... I can't believe we're seeing Voronov at the final and not my Aliyev. Oh, oh no. So, okay. uh, but I think what's so interesting about the pair event here is Tara and Danny, obviously you and Zhang were supposed to be here, so they were the top team that pulled out. Um, and then Tara and Danny really, like, stepped up to the occasion and got some generous calls. So I'm going to do a video on back outside death spirals. They added, Danny added a spread eagle into it, but they were like, you need to I, read. He may not be the issue. <laughs> well, you have to look at their death spiral. They had a generous caller here who gave them the fact that her head was below her knee, which I don't believe it was. If you watch it. Um, not in slow-mo when you really the, look, it, it, it's, it seemed a bit generous. Gracious. They Gen got it yeah. level three. Yeah. On it, they had a great program for them here, and as well as they're going to do. They got the Grand Prix have been scoring higher as they've been going along. They got great marks. They're in it to be. They're definitely in it to go to four continents, and I think that they're, um, you know, neck and neck with Ashley and Tim in terms of being the second U.S. pair. Tara and Danny always start slow and then move up so i think that that's interesting um they're n in no danger of challenging alexa and chris at this this point so it'll be interesting to see what happens with them yeah, yeah. and again i mean i've mentioned it before to me having that one you have danny who has mm -hmm. great quality but you also have the one of the most unique mm -hmm. free skates choreographically of the whole thing and again you put in new positions you put in a new idea mm -hmm. and even if you don't do it well you have captured our attention mm -hmm. which is i said it again and i know i am a broken record i want to know who redid that short because it just brought it right back to just like wow. generic bland 
tofu, no point of view. And go watch Kami and Drew's free skate and tell us who did it better. Yeah, exactly. Well, one did it authentically and first, and the other did it because they were afraid to do something cool, which would have ultimately been their only chance to upset Alexa and Chris would have been to keep both those programs, in my mm-hmm. opinion. But, but I do... It's getting better. They, Tara is like a very captivating performer. I will say with her shortcomings and the jumps, there is something about her that's like she emanates star quality. She's performing so much from the neck up and from... She doesn't even. She can do Swan Lake without even having beautiful positions. Like, do you know how hard that is? Like, you're not even like the a bell. See, and Dave, isn't that interesting? Because I think he gives so much Mm -hmm. physically, performance-wise, and I just see her detracting in. But she does add with her performance level. Let me give her that, okay? She's. Uh, I will let you give her that, and you see, I I I am not going to give her that. I'm giving her that, okay? (laughs) Okay. Okay. So. I think with a different with a different girl. In they do season. hide her in the step sequence in the short. She almost fell on one of those back outside turns. If you go and watch it, and he's in front, so that they can't really they try to mask. And that's it. the cheesy easy program. That's not even the interesting yeah. program. Uh, in terms of Vanessa and Morgan, they were not at their best here, but it was um, enough. Enough, and I think that they can peak later on and be confident and successful. I mean, the errors from her were a little bit surprising, but I think I felt like. Because uh, they do the sow in the short, or they do the toe in the short? The toe. Yeah, there's a toe. And there's a sow in the long that she missed, yeah. Yeah, because she missed the sow in the long, but the toe yeah. in the short. And it was just, as they started, and I so enjoyed her, mm-hmm. like texting back and forth with her and doing the interview with her. Mm-hmm. Like, I love her energy. She's a real person. Mm-hmm. She's fabulous. And I, as they started, I thought, you know, they never seem to have jump issues. And it, it was almost that Voloshajar and Trenkov thing when they were so perfect in that beginning, that fall of 2013, mm-hmm. that you got a little scared. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I'm glad that there were just a little bit of... Remember, she through. made the comment in our interview, I wish we saved it for Worlds, but we'll take it. And it was, I think there's a little bit of that, but I think that they can show up to the final and be feistier and just go out and do it. Because they're probably yeah. in their heads expecting to skate that well all the time, but and to be to be in Grenoble, which I went to last year, it's a we small, remember. I know <laughs> it's a small arena, it's a small town, and I'm sure that they were running the French press circuit like crazy there. You know what I mean? It must be a big ask for them. Do to you be. feel the Peggy Fleming green when you're in Grenoble? The chartreuse. Like, were you seeing it? What was it named after a liqueur? That that. Yeah, did, yeah. Did that you, is literally that color. <laughs> did you have it? Did you have the liqueur? I didn't. I had plenty of liqueur, but it was not a chartreuse. <laughs> Oh, there you Have go. it for me. Let me know what it was. Okay, okay. We're nine months on the wagon. So, you know. Hey-o, hey-o. Hey-o. So, okay. yeah. Um, but anyway. So you'll just have to wear the dress. In that I'll shape. wear the dress. Well, that's when you when you go on the wagon, you could wear all these clothes because you're it, it, you, it's, Who's it? Hey, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's great. Okay, when you when you get rid of the sugar cravings. Anyway, so okay. um, yeah, let's move along to the ice dance because I know that that's where we have all of our just feet. real quick shout out, real quick, real shout quick out. shout out. North Koreans get a new program. Yeah. We do love you. Um, Others. And the judges went with it. It was so clean and crisp. But we're we're just ready for new material. And again, like La mentioned one time, she was like where did these basic skating skills come from? Aside from like, you know, political melodrama that some of the reports like want to infuse into this. I'm just, there is a curiosity. Who gave you the information? It, and who gave you the training? Where did it come from? Yeah, it's because it's fascinating. And, well, and they do skate. especially because so many times when, when countries study skating, they study the jumps and not the art. My mom keeps calling me. Um, but we'll have to, I'll have to call her back. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, I think, I think it's so interesting, but, um, yeah, it's so interesting because usually North, North, usually the people focus on the jumps and they have good skating basics and stuff. So it's interesting with them. They need new programs, Jonathan. They need a new look. Like we're, I'm getting bored of it. Yeah. Well, and here's, here's an interesting thing too, because this happened in opera for a brief Mm -hmm. period of time. There was a great deal of Asian singers at a time when there weren't necessarily um, opera educators Mm -hmm. there. And so they would take all of these recordings. This Mm -hmm. was like a school of thought briefly in late 70s, uh, 
and early 80s. And they would take recordings of these great singers and try to emulate them. Mm -hmm. but, then, but then sometimes the product becomes a mimicry instead of something authentically learned. And that's mm -hmm. what I would think about the skating or even when the Chinese pair program was developing and they were watching and studying video. It's still, I would never have guessed that mm -hmm. from that kind of study they could have the quality that they had. Yeah. Yeah. And Tamara Moskvina's team, uh, who owned the bronze here, is has some really nice qualities. I think that they are really... I would watch Tamara. They were tomorrow. pretty devastated when they thought they were not going to win the bronze. Yeah. I mean, the Koreans gave them the bronze after the fact, but that kiss and cry, I was like, wow, they, they really came in expecting a medal. Mm-hmm. That lets you know where they are at. And they have great qualities, just a little sleepy right now. Also, I'm sure it's coming. I think Tamara Moskvina agrees with me about Beatles programs because look at the crowd shot after uh, Smart and Diaz. Like, there's something amiss. It's such a wonderful team that Free Dance to me completely get is devoid of everything wonderful about them. And right. look at the crowd shot. Moskvina wasn't clapping and looked completely bored by it. And well, they... I don't, I understand her sentiment. <laughs> yeah. Just I'm telling you, look at the cameraman, and it's not focused on her. If you don't know what she looks like, you'd miss it, but she was in the stands for it. I'm going to go back and look. Okay. Yeah. Was that, that should have been in TSL Instagram stories. Oh, I God, I should have. You know what? I've been busy, so I'll... You've been great at it, though. Okay. I'll, I'll get back on. So, anyway, it was Thanksgiving. We were doing Thanksgiving things. I went Black Friday shopping. We went to the movies with my parents, and, you know, <laughs> I saw that Nicole Kidman movie like um la, uh, the boy erased it was pretty good i don't think that she nailed the oscar i think she did a triple flip double toe combination instead of the triple flip triple. it was, didn't have enough of a speech in there i got really. you i got you yeah you she know, didn't have her what would you show at during the nomination? also she's not doing enough during the promotion of the film because i think she wants to maybe one day restore relations with her children but obviously gay conversion therapy, you would think, oh, what do the Scientologists feel about that? Oh, tell us about a repressive religion. And that would be really so interesting if she would, if she wanted the Oscar, she would have to go there. And maybe she's saving it for before, but I, I don't think so. I think that that's what she needs to make a stand. If she wants this to be her Oscar win, she needs you are to... You are in skating analyst mode. <laughs> you just like dissected her. Like, that's great, Dave. Oh, I do this all... <laughs> this is just... Hey, how about when I went to the opera and I was like, Let's, we can just turn it on. You, you know? wrote me a dissertation about that Met competition. And amazing. I picked every winner. Just letting you, you know. Yeah. You did. You were like, no, I don't think she has the voice for this. I don't like this. I'm like, well, yeah, just because she wins doesn't mean she's good. Whatever. Yeah. I picked the winners. Okay. <laughs> like a Terry. That's what matters, honey. Anyway. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> let's move on to the ice dance. Um, I, oh, shout out to Cammie and Drew. They're lovely as always. And really do go watch their free skate and they do have lovely qualities. Um, I, I think that they should be, go to worlds for Canada. But anyway. Uh, let's talk about the dance. Papadakis and Cesaron. I liked the new direction. I'm relieved <laughs> that it's not exactly the same as what they did before because I never want to be getting a million comments about that and it's different enough and they're stretching them for four more years. I love the opening of their free dance and I think it's so interesting That's and I'm obsessed with her flipping positions in that was lift. Was that the stationary lift yeah. that they opened the free dance with? Just fabulous. Plus five. Think, Plus five. Yeah, yeah, unique, and it, it, it hones you right in, because you're yeah. like, they're doing something cool. I'm here for it. They have some interesting Marie France details where they cross their free leg behind their skating leg, and they look at the same time. Like, there are some, like, Gordieva and Grinkov, like, plus five moments going on here. And then the music loses me about halfway through and I'm not sure. Yeah, it, it, the, the, the bang it started with was mm. not the level of interest I kept throughout the program. There were great moments is mm. how I left this program, keeping in mind that I know this is their Nepal. Right? Yes. <laughs> this is their autumn classic technically. But um, there, the things I loved mm. were um, in the curve lift, and they, they kind of overuse this quality sometimes, this like flopping on each other with their weight. So he does that hydroblade moment and mm -hmm. she just, you know, 
takes a quick nap on top of them while he but does that's it. the french aesthetic it's that like that's their whole yeah. thing you know and it works for me in a moment like that i thought it was particularly have you noticed how much better she's become as a skater in like the last three years with the confidence and the edge work and everything she's become really in the big picture trajectory yes from last season less so does that make I sense? mean, in the since the time we've been watching them, someone just emailed me and they were asking me about strong female skaters, and I said she's quite strong. Like she's not weak. Like I hope you said Madison Hubble first. I she did was... say Madison Hubble first, Thanks. but anyway, okay. um, she's quite quite good. Um, she's and and really there was and, and she is... brings the emotion to this team and the interest like that if you watch. He's bringing beauty, and yes. she's bringing interest. That's exactly what it is. He's and bringing they... beauty, and she's bringing soul. You know, like that is, yes. <laughs> well, it's the, okay, the rotational left. Mm -hmm. Okay, now here we go. When she just hurls her body completely open to embrace him, and she's like two feet off the ground, mm -hmm. just trusting the bejesus out of him, he, and she grabs right onto him and he just turns open as can be. I was like, come on. Mm -hmm. I mean, what better moment in a free dance is there? Do I think this is their finest free dance? No, no. I do not. I don't, it's not my but favorite. It's dance interesting dance. enough that it'll push them forward, but they need to rework it. Sometimes and Marie Font struggles with the music change in the middle section, right? Like we need yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. It, it was like, if I was just in the other room, and this was just like an Apple music playlist. It would just be like weepy, sad, generically emo ice dance music. Of, and that's what it means today. Like for so many of the skaters this season, it's kind of a constant drone of like. Emotive. So a lot of girls were very worried about her costume in the free dance. They thought that there was like a bra strap showing and maybe there was going to be another issue. They well, were... I didn't care for it, but I wasn't nervous about the is like a technical issue happening. Well, girls are, you know, watching her because of, you know, that however that happened she developed a reputation yes. <laughs> she's, de she's developing a reputation <laughs> <laughs> so it's, yeah she's gonna have that uh the french boy uh romance like she's she's maintaining my interest throughout so that was, exactly. she's a plus five for me i like her but so. having said that like I, and you you'll have to tell me like things like that whole choreographic sequence was a choreographic sequence what are they called yeah, the side by side choreographic sequence at the very end. There's some there's some real um, movement and interest, and in, they're taking it to the next level. And I was gonna say there's some real issues with the synchronization still. Yes, yes. And, and and that I think is I look forward to certain things like is your hand open? Is your hand closed? Are you this way? Or are you where they way? scored things generously as three time world champions? Yes, but like yeah. what will was it an interesting program? Yes, they're taking ice dance to the forefront at this point. Yes, because again, I, so I, it's not my favorite program of theirs, but it is certainly the highest level program choreographically for me of the entire season. Yeah. Now, okay. Hawaii and Baker, I still think that they have good material, but they're not performing it at a very high level. This is like, we need to like really get in like hunker down mode before nationals and like really... Trade. They're in the finals. I know. And like, that blows my mind that Piper and Paul with two bronze aren't going to be in, but like because of a fluke situation, we're going to see Hawaii well, and Baker. So. Hawaii and Baker also like did the wrong step. I mean, Piper and Paul also did the wrong step at one point in their pattern. So like, I like, know. There's like, <laughs> Jonathan, they were kind of tentative here. They could have gotten the silver. Uh, well, maybe not with the politics, but. No uh, way, yeah. <clears throat> but, um,. They're quite good, but they were. This was not their best performance. They did not skate at a hundred percent to the point where I'm wondering, like, would the Canadians? The Canadians have been on the Piper and Paul train. Now, if Weaver and Poggi make everyone cry over the Dennis Ten tribute, like, would they give them the Nationals? Like, I don't know. Like, or should they stick with Piper and Paul? Do, are Piper and Paul are they having a real ceiling and like the fifth place? You know, because there are going to well, be was, two I'm, Russian teams in the top five. That's clear. I have not seen Piper and Paul live yeah. and to those who have seen them live including at this event there was an argument that they come across as very small they do and but I, they are small people you know and i i don't get that necessarily having only watched them on television but i haven't seen this program live so that's the other thing i think it's a very nice program they skated to me they looked tight here just in their body movement and their carriage and they looked like they i think that mistake looks like it got in their heads a little bit like 
they're I think the fact that they know they're like back is up against the wall with the final and that the Russian politics are going insane this season and you can Ridiculous. feel it. And, you okay, know, we... right before we get into those politics, because I have stuff to say too, but to me, what sums up Piper and Paul are almost the last bits of this free dance. Mm-hmm. The music doesn't do it for me. I know that there's an emotional connection. As a viewer, it's just more of the same kind of emo drone. Um, at the end, they do a very cool slide. Yes. Right? So cool. Then it's real awkward getting out of it and then into that final spin. To me, that's them. The, the spin is so cool where yeah. she's like completely hands free, like balancing on his head and neck. It's an incredible moment, but yet it was almost attractive because I see two interesting things that were just thrown there in a weird transition and then you end. That's them. It's like yeah, two it, cool it, things it with an awkward that. limb and a bit like this, and it's yeah. just not ever finished yeah. all the way. Yeah, it's it's the ingredients are there. Mm-hmm. They're there. It, it just doesn't totally line up yet. No. With Victoria and Nikita, I don't think the idea is there, but the politics and what they can do, and they're, they look like they've gotten more of Zulin's attention, and they're training harder, and you can tell that it's, like, coming together. They're getting a lot of benefits from the judging panel. But, um, I mean, it's a good pancake. I still think Stepanov and Bukin will outscore them at the final, but even with Zulin and all of his judges and the magic that we know he is capable of. But there's there's obviously we are seeing a Russian poll and it's not fortunately it's not the end of the world for me. These like are not I, bad programs. They're just not. These great. aren't these aren't a fa- Bukin, uh, Stepanov and Bukin and and this team also. It's are not, not like we're living through Bobrova again. OK, like this isn't exactly it's yeah. exactly what I'm saying. But, you know, we're talking about, oh, they edged Piper and Paul. In my opinion, it's. Um, Madison and Zach, who need to be very Nervous. aware of this pull of two Russian teams. Like, you're talking about two I, Russian teams in the final? I want to know. Anyone or who was the there. Five, they could be on that. They could be on that medal stand and completely shut out. I um, think Marie Hart- France, who seems very in tune to Zulin and his BS, and she has her own brand of politics too, but I think that she is watching. And I imagine Maddie and Zach are the ones at home I'll be very curious to see them at the final because they have they're to be on the chopping, but they're the most vulnerable. With so the the, this is how the politics are working is that right now they're uh, the, the French are locked in at number one for this year. Yeah. Right? If this, if the Russians accomplish what they want, they may be vulnerable in a year. Okay. Like unless they keep pushing ahead. So you got the French up here, you've got Madison and Zach and you've got, two Russian teams that are getting... It's just like the Olympics when they pushed for both Adelina and Yulia. They're pushing both Russian teams, so they have two options to get on that podium. Yeah, they, they need a fallback. Piper and Paul one. Piper and Paul are done. They're not going to medal at Worlds uh, for this year. Sorry, Canada. Don't get mad at me, but this is politically what I'm saying is unless things yeah. change with the momentum and how uh, what is, is deserved or our personal preferences no. about the skating. This is how the way it's... the judges are seemingly projecting, and I stands more than anything else can really project this. So now we have two Russian teams in the top five. I'd argue two Russian teams in the top four, which makes this, like, really dangerous. Hubble and Zach need to nail that pattern. Every single one of those key points, because none of the teams, other than Tiffany and Jonathan, and, and even Stepan and Bugin are kind of strong, that is where Hubble and, and Donahue can really just get lock their in points. Status. Yeah, and lock it in at the final and get every single one of those points. So because now let's talk about okay, so that's the way the politics are shaping up. Mm-hmm. So now wipe the politics away for a second, and we will pretend, ha ha ha, that an ice dance it doesn't matter. Do you find compare? Because I, I do believe the material and the sheer skating of Gabby and Guillaume is are, they're the front runners. Yeah. I agree. Now, two, three, four for you as we compare the Russians to each other and mm-hmm. as to Zach. Mm-hmm. Um, I almost I almost always call them Mac and Zaddy. I know. It's okay. <laughs> Hubble and Donahue is easier. Maddie, yeah. H and D. Um, I enjoy their quality the most. But, but their the kissing you is not struggle. interesting. The, the material isn't as good this year. Stepanova and Buchan have goofy material, but their performance is just... Is it goofy? I think the short is brilliant. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a little less sophisticated, I'd say, but what it is, is it's giving you 
So the free um, is sloppy and derivative, but the short to me, the rhythm dance it's is higher. It's yeah. Da 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 da. And to it's, me, technically, it would be um, Nikita that would be fourth, but the 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 surge they received here was much larger than. I, and they have made the improvements, surprise. but to me, it's very fourth place. Um, and I think that Piper and Paul should really be in the pewter contention, if we're really being honest, but. Yes. And then Weaver and Poge come back and you're like, will the judges still look at them? Are they completely wiped out of the conversation? But They're a wild card because it could yeah. go either way to me. And then it's like, who's pulling for them? Do they have any politics? Like, I don't know. Because this is a really interesting um, political situation going on in Ice Dance. So I don't know what will happen. This is really... It's interesting stuff. It's just... I adore Marie France. I know you do also. I've enjoyed her work with um, Zach mm -hmm. and Maddie, what she's been able to do, what she did for, you know, I just clearly adore her. But we knew with the flavor of the month kind of mentality of skating, I feel this season, unfortunately, we have reached the oversaturation point. We've reached right. capacity where, because of sheer volume, we are experiencing not the the most dedicated. And remember product. how we started the show by talking about how Evgenia is very invested in her skating and like she helped pick the free skate that she wanted to do a tango. You have to come into Marie France and a Marina and with your own ideas sometimes. And you could tell that, that Gabby and Guillaume, I imagine were either found the music or were very communicative with her about the kind of program they wanted to do. And that this was a creation together. And that's why it's the most interesting Hubble and Donahue, I heard, didn't know what they wanted to do for a free dance, and then they picked Kissing You, and they always liked it. But to me, that's the that was the biggest problem, is that they picked if, that if, music. If you're coming up and you're saying, well, I guess we could, we're done. Yeah. To me, I feel like I need someone to be like, I have got to skate to this. And by the I way, not every year do you have the idea of, oh my God, I want to do this. Sometimes it's, I don't know um, what I were going to do. Uh, you love the music one year. Look, Piper and Paul happened to have a situation where they were like, we want to do this music. And it worked for them. I have a feeling this was Hubble and Donahue's year of being like, I don't know what we should use, yeah. right? And it chose. Unless they changed. The, it's just not inspired in the same way. It's like this resurgence of like old school skating that's lovely, but not going to push you but, ahead. But not what made them special. They're not throwback skaters. They are current. They yeah. are innovative. Like, so you need to be on the... I on still the think end. you see them live, their power and their edge quality, even doing, if you don't love the Kissing You music, I imagine you put that head to head with the other teams and it will come across better, especially if they're more trained. Again, we're also, our perception of them is seeing them so much earlier in the season. Right. And, and again we would be silly to assume that adjustments haven't been being made since Canada and, and yeah. state America. So, I'll be yeah. very curious to see what happens. Cause I imagine Marie France is on top of that. But like, like she, I hope so, but there's only so much creativity you can give earnestly. Mm -hmm. And she, you see, I think they're, they're getting to that point where things are stretched thin and the products. Mm, it's like when everyone flocked to Marina, yeah. Suddenly, suddenly, Detroit was an epicenter, and now it, there's tumbleweed blowing through there during ice dance hours. You yeah. know, like so. It's an yeah. I don't know. I think. Um, yeah, we, Allison Reed is now with Marina, and she in Florida. I'm very curious about that situation. And she's Lithuanian. Are we on the fourth fast or the fifth? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah. That's hysterical. But um, she's the United Colors of Benetton spokesperson. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know there, and. Uh, you know, I'm so curious to see what happens going into the final, but this is certainly going to be quite... interesting. Yeah, because like almost anything could happen. We've got a lot of new people going to the finals. It's a totally yeah. I'm looking forward to it, and I kind of want to like tie my shirt in a bunch, like Gabriella did. Like I think I'm like it's coming back. It's everything. And I'm after doing. Thanksgiving, I want to put on one of those moos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and win my. And have my um, my traditional post Olympic awesome year like yes. Elizabeth. <laughs> okay. Yes. Well, as always, we want to remind you all to hold an edge and look sexy. Bye, guys. <laughs>